This lecture is part of an online mathematics course on group theory, and we'll be covering the groups of order 12 using the Zilov theorems that we did last lecture to help classify them. So let's start by writing down all the groups of order 12 we can think of. So first of all, there's a cyclic group of order 12. Then we can take a cyclic group of order 6 times a cyclic group of order 2, or we can take a cyclic group of order 3 times two cyclic groups of order 2. <coughs> We've got the dihedral group of order 12. Um, then we can take the um, symmetric group of order 6 on um, three points and multiply that by the group of order 2. Um, then we can take a binary cyclic group of order 12. You remember a binary cyclic group means we take a group in SO3 over the reals, that's all rotations, and using quaternions there's a map from the group of unit quaternions onto the group of rotations and we can take the inverse image of that. So if we take a cyclic group of order 6 here, its inverse image will have order 12 here. Similarly, we can form the binary dihedral group of order 12, where we take a dihedral group of order 6 here and take its inverse image. Then we can take a lot of semi-direct products. So we can take the group Z modulo 3Z and take a semi-direct product with Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 2Z. Um, or we can take a group Z modulo 3Z and take a semi-direct product with the group Z modulo 4Z, which can act on the group with three elements. Um, we can also take rotations of a tetrahedron, which is order 12. We can take the alternating group A4 that I'll explain in a moment. And there's another semi-direct product, Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 2Z. And this is acted on, this is a symmetry of order 3, so we can take a semi-direct product of Z modulo 3Z. So let's just recall what the alternating group is. The alternating group A4 is a subgroup of the symmetric group. So the symmetric group acts on four variables, W, X, Y, and Z. And we can look at W minus X, W minus Y, W minus Z, X minus Y, X minus Z, Y minus Z. And if you act on this polynomial here by a permutation, it, <coughs> it changes either to itself or to minus itself because um, it will permute all these factors and some of the factors will end up multiplied by minus one. So if f is equal to this, a4 is the permutations fixing f. And since any permutation maps this either to f or to minus f, we see that a4 is indexed 2 in s4, so is order 12. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 groups of order 12. Well, there are in fact only five groups of order 12, and it turns out that many of these groups are the same. In fact, all the groups on the same row are isomorphic to each other. So these are isomorphic. Um, these are all isomorphic. These are isomorphic. These are isomorphic. And these are isomorphic. Um, it's not too difficult to check all these isomorphisms. So, so we want to show that any group of order 12 is isomorphic to one of these five groups. And now... Um, it will be very useful to recall the Zilov theorems. So any group G of order 12 has Zilov subgroups 
of orders three and four. And the number, so the number of three seal of subgroups, three seal of subgroups is one mod three by one of the seal of theorems, and it divides the order of the group. So the number of seal of three subgroups is either one or four. And the number of seal of two subgroups must again be one mod two, and it must divide the order of the group. So it's either one or three. So what we're going to do is first look at the case when the number of seal of three subgroups is one. So assume one seal of three subgroup. Um, then it must be normal, because if it wasn't normal, there would, it would have a conjugate different from itself. So we see that G is a semi-direct product of a seal of three subgroup with a seal of four subgroup. And now we have four cases because the seal of four subgroup can either be Z modulo 4Z or Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 2Z. And it must act on the zeal of three subgroup. The zeal of three subgroup must be Z over 3Z. And this only has two automorphisms, which are one mapping everything either to one or minus one. So an action of a zeal of four subgroup on a zeal of three subgroup must be a homomorphism of one of these groups to a group of order two. And it can either be a trivial homomorphism or a non-trivial homomorphism. And this one has one non-trivial homomorphism, and this is three non-trivial homomorphisms, but they're all really the same optoautomorphisms of this group. So we have four cases to consider. The seal of two subgroup can be Z modulo 4Z or Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 2Z. And the action on Z modulo 3Z can be trivial or non-trivial. And all we have to do is to figure out what we get in each of these four cases. So Z modulo 4Z with trivial action is giving us the cyclic group of order 12. Z modulo 4Z acting on Z modulo 3Z with a non-trivial action is giving us some semi-direct product like this, which as we said is actually also isomorphic to the binary dihedral group of order 12. Um, a trivial action of, of this group on S3 is just going to give us a product. So we get Z modulo 6Z times Z modulo 2Z, which is of course the same as Z modulo 3Z times Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 2Z. And finally, if we have a non-trivial action of this on Z modulo 3Z, what we're getting is Z modulo 2Z times group S3 or equivalently the group D12. So this gives the four cases when there is a normal subgroup of order three. Now suppose, so now suppose the subgroup of order three is not normal. then the number of conjugates um, you remember it's one mod three and it has to divide 12 so it must have four conjugates so um so we've got four subgroups s1 s2 s3 and s4 of order three and no two of these subgroups can have any element in common other than the identity, because if they had an element in common, they would be the same. So this, the, the, so the number of elements of order three 
Well, we have two elements of order three in each of these subgroups, and these four element, th these eight elements are all distinct. So this leaves, so there are four elements of G not of order three. So they must form the seal of two subgroup because we know it has a seal of two subgroup of order four and the seal of two subgroup can't contain elements of order three. So it must consist of all the elements left over. So it must be normal because the only possibility is it contain is it consists of these four elements that are not of order three. So our group is a semi-direct product of a group of order four by a group of order three. So it's either Z modulo four Z, semi-direct product Z modulo three Z, or Z modulo two Z times Z modulo two Z, semi-direct product Z modulo three Z, because these are the only two groups of order four. And this case here is not possible because the group of order four has no automorphisms of order three. So we can't form an interesting semi-direct product except by making this act trivially, in which case there would only be one subgroup of order three, which contradicts our assumption that the subgroup of order three isn't normal. So the only possible case is this. And we notice that this group here has an automorphism of order three. In fact, it's got two automorphisms of order three because you can just permute the, the um, you can just do a cyclic permutation of the three elements that aren't the identity. So we get exactly one group that is a semi-direct product of the Klein four group by group of order three. And you can easily check this is isomorphic to A4 and it's isomorphic to um, whatever the other one was, um, the rotations of a tetrahedron. Um, an easy way to see this is to notice that we've shown this is the only group with more than two elements of order three, that is order 12. And these two groups both have more than two elements of order three and they have order 12. So they're all, they're all the same. So um, that classifies the groups of order 12. And we're now going to look at the groups in a bit more detail. Um, so what we're going to do is just look at the subgroups and see what happens. Let's start with the easy cases. Well, Z modulo 12Z, um, it's very easy to write down its subgroups because the subgroups are just going to be um, indexed by divisors of 12. So we get subgroups of order one, two, four, three, six, and 12. So the, the lattice of subgroups looks like this, where I've just written for each subgroup, I've just written down down its order. Um, and um, Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 6Z is not much harder to do. Again, the, the, these groups are both abelian, which makes it easy to work out their subgroups. So it's got three subgroups of order two, all contained in the subgroup of order four. And it's got a subgroup of order three, and this is contained in three subgroups of order six. And this is contained in the subgroup of order 12. And each subgroup of order six contains um, subgroup of order two. So we also get lines like that. So that does the abelian ones. Um, abelian groups tend not to be very exciting. The non-abelian groups are a little bit trickier to do. So let's do rotations of a tetrahedron. Um, or we can think of this as the semi-direct product of um, the group of order four by the group of order two. Well, it's got three subgroups of order two, and it's got a normal subgroup of order four. Um, it may not be immediately obvious what the subgroup, normal subgroup of order four of rotations of the tetrahedron is, but it consists of the three, you see it's got three elements of order two, which consist of rotating the tetrahedron like that, 
or like that or whatever the third one is and these form a group of order four um, in terms of permutations the group of order four contains the identity permutation and the three permutations of this form so these form a little normal subgroup of order four of the group of rotations of the tetrahedron um, well, it's also got four subgroups of order three. And that's about it, really. So its lattice of subgroups looks like this, where you can now see the only normal subgroups are this one, this one, and, and this one. Um, Um, now let's look at the binary dihedral group. Um, so this contains um, a subgroup of order three. Um, and the quotient by the group of order three is cyclic, so it contains the only groups containing it have order six and order 12. It's also got a unique subgroup of order two. However, it's got three subgroups of order four. So its lattice of subgroups ends up looking a bit like this. Um, binary dihedral group, there's not really very much interesting to say about it. Um, finally, we'll do the group dihedral group of order 12 and try and pick out its subgroups. And this starts to get a bit complicated. Um, first of all, it's got subgroup of order one and it's got seven subgroups of order two. Because if we look at a hexagon, it's got three conjugacy classes of subgroups because you remember we can um, reflect in these three lines, which gives us three subgroups and we can reflect in these three lines which gives us these three subgroups and then we can rotate by 180 degrees which gives us yet another subgroup of order order two um, it's also got a subgroup of order three consisting of just rotations and it's got three subgroups of order six so one of these subgroups contains these three. The other subgroup of order six contains these three. And these two subgroups are isomorphic to the symmetric group on three elements. And it's got one subgroup of order six isomorphic to Z modulo six Z, which contains the final, um, final element of order two. Um, next, we've got um, three subgroups of order four. And you can see one of these subgroups of order four by drawing this orange rectangle here and just looking at the automorphisms fixing this rectangle. And there are three more rectangles you can draw. So there are, there are three of these. And this subgroup of order four contains one of these green involutions and one of the blue ones. And there are two other subgroups of order four which similarly contain um, groups uh, like that. Uh, one contains that. and. Let's do that one containing that. And these are all contained in a big group of order 12. Um, so we can now pick out the normal subgroups. Well, any subgroup of index two is normal and the whole group is normal and the trivial group is normal. And also this group must be normal because there's only one subgroup of order three. And this group is normal because it's in the center. So the red ones are the normal subgroups. And the remaining subgroups, you can see they form um, conjugacy classes of, of, of three subgroups. Um, so that pretty much does the groups of order um, 12 and Next lecture, we will probably do automorphisms of cyclic groups and classify the groups of order 15.